Moto's shading, rendering, and baking tools are extremely powerful and allow you to actually create very high detail textures using Moto Shader Tree and also a lot of our rendering features to allow for you know shadows and lighting and things of that sort to be baked into your texture as well, which is very common with Dota 2 character textures. Now, as you can see here, I have this high detail sickle object in my scene and I wanna start assigning materials to it because I wanna author materials for each individual component and then bake down the, um, the lighting and those materials to my low res item. So let's go ahead and select in item mode, the blade right here, press the M key and name that blade and go through every single component, M and name that pull and name it with an associated name. Come down to the handle, handle, and uh, I can select the head and the teeth, even though they're both separate items and assign the same material for both and name that head. And an interesting thing down here, the material for this handle item changed at the same time as I changed the material up here. This is because this handle is an instance of this handle. And you know, this is something important to point out because we don't, we don't wanna change or assign materials to all these individual instances. We just wanna assign a material to the source of the instance. So select the chains, because if you remember, they are instances, right click on it and click on select source of instance. And now you don't have to, but I can drill down to the different layers and groups and view my original source item that those instances are based on. It's selected, press the M key and name that chain. And you'll notice the material changes in OpenGL. All right, so come over to the shader tree and you can see that if I change my view from material to shader tree, I have the shader tree present with a whole bunch of different materials inside of it. Um, I can expand any of these materials, like for instance, let's expand the head, grab the head material, and I'm gonna adjust the color to say, for instance, red. I can also come up to the texture menu and open the material editor. You can see I've got this nice big render previewer open here. Well, what I did was, I hit these diagonal arrows, which now collapses it down into the entire material editor, which contains the shader tree, render properties, color wheel, and clips and the render previewer. We can hit these diagonal arrows or press zero on the number pad to expand that to fill up the whole window so we get a nice preview. You can see the effect of that um, material here in the render view. Now this is being rendered with full global illumination and that, is, that means it's being lit by the environment and also being lit by a uh, direct light, but I have the direct light turned off. If you notice, I'll turn this on and it gets brighter. Really don't want the direct light on. I just want kind of soft shadows right now. But this entire environment is lighting our object. It will also affect the reflections. So for instance, if I come over to this head layer, I want to change um, back to white. So I'll just select that white preset color right there and right click on top of the material preset browser palette and the preset browser palette has well you guessed it presets preset environments images mac caps materials expand the materials group and then expand the metals group i can come down to for instance gold and i can left click and drag the gold material into the head material group and now you'll see it show up here in the render preview this is kind of crazy full global illumination uh, render with reflections and stuff just you know showing up almost instantly all right but that's not the only way I can add a material I can also just undo that really quickly and it's gonna undo my camera moves there and select my material group and double click on top of the material and we'll fill that group with my material instead of actually adding a group of its own. I also can left click and drag on it and drag it over into the render previewer and you can see it actually highlights the different components here. And so I'll drag that on top of my blade object and it'll update and now we've got a golden blade. How cool is that? You can also right click on, on top of any material inside the render previewer and edit that material individually or you can left click on top of just separate items inside the render previewer. You'll see it actually highlight it, select it in OpenGL and select the associated material for you. So really nice and easy ways to interact with, you know, authoring materials and shaders, things of that sort. So I'll go ahead and add gold for this and come on down to maybe my steel presets. You know what, I definitely don't want gold for the actual blade itself. So I'll expand that, right click on it, delete it, 
maybe grab the brush deal. Um, just, you know, nice rough look to start off with. Um, what if I want to adjust some of the material properties? Like that's way too clean. I can come up to my images and presets and come down to metal images and look through like all different types. You know what? It's like, I just want to break up the surface a little bit. So I'll grab that image and drag and drop it into my material. And the textured locator will tell you how it's assigned. It's assigned by UV map and the UV map name is handle. And I had to create UV maps for all these uh, different components. Now it's not assigned correctly. We need to have this assigned to blade. And you can see now the image shows up on our object and diffuse color is actually affecting things. I could change the effect, right click on it and change that to, for instance, um, reflection amount and it'll affect it even more strongly where that texture is now affecting the reflection amount. You can see it updating right away. So really great, easy ways of authoring your materials inside of Modo. Um, now, one thing, I did show you how to set up materials for individual items, but I did not show you how to set up materials for selections because you're not limited to setting up materials just for the items themselves. So let's select the item like the handle right here, come into polygon component mode, select one poly after another, L for loop. Do the same here. And I want this trim to be a different material. So M, silver. And now we have a different material for this that we can continue editing. And say, for instance, oops, grab the wrong one. I click preset browser and continue editing with our metal presets. And maybe come down to something like nickel and drag and drop that onto their texture open material editor. And we get a nice quick preview of that nickel assignment. So all you have to do is go in there, select the polygons and assign the material to it, and it'll be available to you in here. Now there's a lot of other cool things we can do with Moto's uh, you know, shading. For instance, what if I want to make a nice painterly effect for this hooded cloaked area? I'll click on this, it opens my material, come down to the material options, bring that all the way down to black, and we can use a great shader in Moto called the occlusion shader. Add layer, processing, occlusion, and change the type to convex because I want to create a dry brush look, like a really painterly dry brush, brush look, so convexity. And you'll see now we've got these black highlights on top. That means I want to invert it so it's white highlights. Change the blend mode over to screen, and now it's screening it on top, and I can uh, adjust the occlusion distance. Now, if you have an image you want to mask this with, that's no problem either. You can also use presets. Add layer, texture, cellular. Now we have a cellular texture in here. I'll make adjustments to my texture locator so it's smaller, 50 millimeters, because the projection type here is solid, and that's a special type projection that kind of finds different angles to project the texture from. Does a, generally a very good job of it. And I can left click, drag and drop that onto my occlusion, and you'll see now the occlusion is being masked by that procedural. It can be an image, it can be anything. So a lot of really great ways to control your material editing inside of Modo. So let's come over to the item list. And let's come back up to the top, close down this whole scene and come over to a scene that has all the materials authored and zoom on out. And if you'll notice, I have a matte cap present in here just so I have a nice visualization in OpenGL. And I'll open up the material editor again and we'll take a look at my completed material authoring. I'll talk about a few more aspects of this. Um, for instance, I actually went in and used the painting tools to paint in this skull as a black and white image. I'll click on that, expand our item list, come over to the shader tree, and you can see that um, inside metals and metal materials and blade, I've got this bake bump image I can open up. And I painted that in Moto using the painting tools and using it as a bump map, also it is a displacement, and also to affect just general shading. Um, like right now, diffuse color is affecting that right now. It's making it darker it's being multiplied on top with some opacity. Just great ways of being able to create your, your textures. Now, if I click on the pole item itself, I can come on up here and uh, open the color layer. And look, I'll turn off the trim group that's right here. And all my gold trim is gone. And what this is doing is I have two image maps, one for text and one for the actual band all the way around. So you just turn text off. And now I'm actually seeing just the band itself. And, um, or I turned, uh, excuse me, yeah, turned the cloak trim off, and now we don't see that trim at all. Now the whole thing is gold. So it was masking out the gold from the rest of it and allowing this material um, down below to actually be able to produce, you know, the occlusion effect and things of that sort. So it's really easy to set up masks. You see it's a group 
mask. So cool, cool stuff as far as controlling your shading. I also used displacements down here on the handle because one of the presets that Moto has is a nice displacement preset. You can see I have these beautiful high quality displace details on my handle that will show up on my final low res texture and really was very easy to produce that kind of a texture. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we need to bake all these different um, textures down onto our low resolution model and also bake out a normal map. Furthermore, we're gonna take things um, further, you know, because I just said furthermore, yeah, we'll take things further and uh, we'll actually render out multiple render outputs. If you look at the top of my shader tree, I have many render outputs in here. And these are the proper render outputs that are needed for a linear compositing workflow. And we'll be able to layer up different things like the actual shadowing and the specularity and the reflection and the diffuse amount, layer them up in a way that we can control them and kind of author our texture through compositing inside of Moto with greater control. So that will be in the baking portion next.